Hello, we are Christian and Corinne from CK Performance Clinics. And welcome to our CK Central series, where we explore fundamental and, dare we say, essential kite surfing moves. To kick off proceedings, we're going to take an in-depth look at changing direction with a transition turn. They come in many shapes and sizes. In this video, we'll concentrate on the infamous transition slide turn. The clue is in the name, it's all about the slide. Unquestionably, the first transition on your radar, which will not only prove very useful, but also open the door to a world of possibilities and combinations. What can be so tough about casually turning around without dipping your derriere in the drink? Well, in practice quite a lot, there are so many variables. And let's be honest, multitasking is a challenge. As such, we're going to give you a step-by-step -step method where you can concentrate on each step separately. Once you feel comfortable, you can combine them into one flowing movement. Probably the first thought in your mind when contemplating changing direction is the need to turn the kite. In the kite last method, you guessed it, you move the kite last. The aim is to make sure that everything is in position, bored on yourself before turning the kite. First thing first, you need time to turn, so don't leave it until the last minute. The idea is not to rush. And you need space. Golden rule, numero uno, check your mirrors and have a good look behind you. Approach on an upwind edge, comfortable enough that you're not hanging on for dear life and can easily reach the bar with both hands. Kind position, the mythical 11 or 1 o'clock. Any higher and it will be difficult to edge. So once you got the kind position, park it and leave it. It stays here. Before we dive in, let's ponder for one second what we're trying to achieve. Change direction. If you want to go back the other way, you need to lose forward momentum. You have to brake. Slow down enough. This holds true for all transitions. The faster you're going, the more you'll need to brake and the longer it will take. To make life easier, don't come in at Mach 10. How do we slow down? One thing's for sure, you can't lift the kite to slow down. As remember, it stays here. You can edge more, which will certainly help, and you can ease the bar out. By reducing the pull in your kite, it will not only slow you down, but also turn you further upwind. This is exactly what you're after. Let's do it. Coming in on an edge, gently ease your bar out. Let your bum drop and you will feel the board turn further upwind. The slide. As your board turns upwind, this is your cue to shift your weight. Bend your front leg and move your hips over your front foot. Slide the tail of the board away from you by extending your back leg. Let's focus on this crucial step. To quote the Oxford Dictionary, slide to move something smoothly along a surface. In this case, the something is the tail of your board. To be able to slide one end of the board, you first need to shift your weight onto the other end. Keeping the kite where it is and easing the bar out to turn up wind will help no end. Then it's up to your dancing hips. To fully appreciate the weight shift, here's a quick on-land drill. Stand with your feet apart, weight on both legs, and try to slide your right foot along the floor. Impossible. Now, shift your weight onto your left foot by moving your hips and bending your left leg. Wow, you can slide! To be more realistic, push through your heel. Now, you can take your hip skills onto the water. You should practice this again and again. Work on your slide. Slide, dip and go. It never gets old. Why do we slide? The aim of the slide is to get the board and yourself ready to go back the other way. The grand finale. The board is in position. Your original front foot has transformed into your new back foot. Time to move the kite. Your aim is to generate enough power to pull you back the other way. 
You need tension in the lines, so pull the bar in a little. Turn the kite with a pull and push, then level the bar. As you steer the kite, it will move up, supporting you, and then across, generating power. Keep your leg bent, with weight over your new back foot, to resist the pull from the kite. Turn your head and follow the kite out of the transition until you're back on an edge. The beauty of moving your kite from around 11 or 1 is that it will generate sufficient power as it flies across the window and therefore end up high enough to give you choices. Take it up or down for extra boost to get you riding upwind again. It's all about control. How hard you steer the kite will depend on how much power you have. The more power you have, the gentler you can be. The harder you steer the kite, the more you'll have to level the bar to direct your kite across the window. If there's too much pull, you can ease the bar out. Keep your weight back and on your heels. You are in a strong position to control the pull and get back on an edge. Once you get more comfortable with each step of the slide turn, you can work towards moving the kite earlier. The kite is always last, but you can move it as soon as you initiate the slide to get your transition even smoother. Feel free to give us a like, subscribe, and if you know anyone this video could help, please share it. See you next time. Enjoy.